Jesus. You took her by the hand and lifted her up in a bed, too sick to move. She was trapped inside, lost in a haze, feverish dreams. Then you took her by the hand and lifted her up. Your touch changed her. The touch of a stranger pulled her up out of the dreams. The fever broke. The touch of a hand changed a life. The touch of a hand lifted from the bed, lifted from sickness, lifted into hope. The touch of a hand can change you. Welcome to worship this morning. We invite you to let the holy into your life, to welcome the holy in and to join us as we spend time as we t spend time with God, know that you're welcome here, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter what pain you bring with you today. Come. You are welcome here. Come and let the Holy touch you and heal you. We continue our journey with the Holy through chapter 1 of the Gospel of Mark. Today we're at verses 29 through 34, where Jesus enters the house of Simon. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. The holy entered Simon's house that day. And when the holy entered the house, the disciples decided that 
They needed to say something about Simon's mother. She must have been more than just a little sick with a cold. She must have been had an illness that made them worried. And so they told Jesus about her. And Jesus gets up and goes over to her bed and lifts her up, taking her by the hand, and she is healed, and she serves them. And she serves them. I hear that line and I go, ugh. She was just in her bed sick enough that you bothered Jesus, right? Sick enough that you were worried about her, that you were so worried that you decided to bother Jesus. In a place where he had come to rest, you decided to give him one more task to do. You bothered him and invited him to heal your mother-in-law. And then she gets up and serves them. And I go, ugh, really? Really, did they have to fall right back into traditional gender roles? Did they have to have that meal right then in that moment? Couldn't they have brought her a cup of tea? Couldn't they have gotten her some cookies and some soup? Couldn't they have served her? But no, she has to get up right away and serve them. So I often go, ugh. But after I get over the fact that they couldn't even let her recover, I have to remind myself that Mark has a larger purpose in this story. That when he says she served him, he's pointing out one of the roles that we as the church are to take on. We're to be of service to others. We're to be servants of others. We're to be the hands that bring comfort, the hands that bring peace, the hands that bring hope to other people. We are to serve others. It's a defining characteristic of what the love of God does through Christians, service to others. And so I know that he didn't want me to just go, ugh. why, why the traditional gender roles? Why, why? Because Mark wants you to take on that role, no matter who you are, no matter whether you have ever served another. Mark wants you to take on that role of love. In fact, in the story of the gospel in Mark, it is usually the unnamed characters who show us what it means to live life in the kingdom. It is the unnamed people who show us how to live and serve and be the love that Jesus has been sharing. When we look at the center of this story, when we look at the woman at the center of the story, we see a person who after they have been touched and healed, becomes part of the dawning kingdom, becomes part of the people who bring the holy to life in the world. She passes on what she has received. Her response to healing is to begin to help others, to pay forward what she has received, to share the love that she has been touched with. And I've been thinking about what it means that in these passages of Scripture, if you to read any of the gospel stories of Jesus, healing is an important part of the work that Jesus does. And yet we've made a mess of healing, right? We've made a mess of how we're to respond to the sick and the ill. Right now, people are afraid to disclose they have COVID because they will be shunned, that people will blame them for not having done all the right things, even though you can have done all the right things and all you did was pick up a gallon of milk and now you're sick. 
So what do we do with this understanding that Jesus heals and cares for people? That when the holy is present, healing occurs. I mean, because after, after Jesus has healed and interacted with Simon's mother-in-law, the rest of the town that evening hears what he has done and brings to him those who are sick or possessed with demons. And I want to stop there for a moment and talk about demon possession because we have used these texts to hurt people. We have used these texts to call other people evil, possessed, and try to get the evil out of them. We have tried to pray the gay away or beat the gay out of someone. We have used these texts to shun people and push people away by saying that they are demon-possessed. And that is not the intent of Mark in sharing these stories of sharing Jesus being able to set evil free from the communities. It is not Jesus' goal as the Holy One of God to be used as a battering ram against those who face so much discrimination. And so when Jesus heals and releases and casts out evil. What we're to gain from the story in the Gospel of Mark is that this dawning, this breaking kingdom comes into your life and transforms who you are and that you are to become part of this new dawning kingdom bringing healing to others. One of the things that I love about the United Church of Christ and the denominations that came into it is that we took this role, especially in the evangelical reform part of the church, we took this role of service, of being deacons, seriously. I mean, I want to just share with you 40 years in which we founded hospitals. In 1889, the Evangelical Deaconess Home and Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri was established. In 1889, Tabitha Institute in Lincoln, Nebraska came into being. In 1892, the Protestant Deaconess Home and Hospital in Evansville, Indiana. In 1902, the Evangelical Deaconess Home and Hospital in Lincoln, Illinois. In 1905, the Evangelical Emmaus Home, Marthasville, and St. Charles, Missouri came into being. In 1908, the Evangelical St. Louis Deaconess Home and Hospital in Fairbault, Minnesota. In 1910, the Evangelical Deaconess Home and Hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In 1910, the Evangelical Hospital in Chicago. In 1911, the Evangelical Deaconess Home in Louisville, Kentucky. In 1912, the Evangelical Deaconess Association in Baltimore, Maryland. In 1913, the Evangelical Deaconess Hospital in Marshalltown, Iowa. In 1915, the Evangelical Deaconess Home and Hospital in East St. Louis, Illinois. In 1970, the Evangelical Deaconess Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. In 1919, the Evangelical Deaconess Hospital in Cleveland, Ohio. There's even more you can learn about the Deaconess Movement and what they did in the lives of people trying to bring healing Two people in need. We have a long history in our faith tradition, in our church, of establishing hospitals and sending out deaconesses to provide care for people. We have a long history. And now the names of all those hospitals I listed have changed, have transformed, have grown and become something else, something new. But we were part of the building up of a system of helping and caring for people, of providing a way for people to seek healing and wholeness. So 
So when we hear these stories about healing, we need to think about our place and our position in the world. We need to think about how Jesus invited people to come to him who needed healing. And how are we living out that call? How are we living out this call to transform people's lives? To let God touch them and change them? How do we lift someone up when they've fallen down? When I was at one of my churches, there was a black family that attended the church. And they lived in that part of town, so usually it's on the other side of the river. This time it was on the other side of the highway. And I would go to visit her every couple months. And I never know what I would encounter when I would go to see her. I know that sometimes she didn't even know who I was. She didn't remember me. Sometimes she didn't remember her past. Sometimes she couldn't share any stories and had no words. At other times, when she saw me, her face lit up, and she was like, you, you're my pastor. Sometimes she was quiet, lost in her interior life. I never know on the day that I come in, will she ask about the church and the people in it? Will this be a good day, a quiet day? Will this be a day I make her anxious? So one of those days as I walked into her house after saying my prayer to prepare me for what comes, she remembered me. She remembered that I was coming and when I go into her room for community, Communion, she talks about the church. She talks about her husband working for the government. And then she asks her son to bring us some of that candy she got, especially for me. We share this chocolate. We share this bread and this wine. It was her day to serve me. It was her day to serve me. Even though I was the one entering the house. She was the one who needed to know that she could take care of another, that she could bring a bit of light to someone else, that she could share something that brings her joy. When the Holy entered that house today, many people were served. Who will you serve today? I invite you to close your eyes and settle into this time of prayer and meditation. We're going to begin with a meditation. As you settle yourself into the quiet and stillness of God's presence, breathe deeply the healing power of God. As you sit in stillness, ask God to share with you 
a way you can lift another up, a way you can reach out your hand, a way you can serve others. Let someone come into your mind, a neighbor, a friend, a family member. Someone who needs the presence of the Holy. Ask God if there is a person in your church or life who could use your help. Let that person's image come into your mind. Then ask God to help you be of service by guiding your hands and feet and heart to help. Jesus, you took her by the hand and lifted her up. The touch of a hand changed a life. The touch of a hand can change you. We ask that you help us become those who touch others, who lift someone else up, who start to serve to share a kind word, to bring a covered dish, to hold the hand of the ill, to write a card and bring food to the hungry, to give clothes to the naked, to sit with someone as the tears flow. Jesus, we have so many people we ask your prayers for, so many people who need your touch to lift them up, we ask prayers for our country and elected leaders. We ask your prayers to be upon our family and friends who are sick. We especially ask you to be with those who are recovering from surgery or who have brought a new life into this world. And we ask you to be with this world that is struggling with a pandemic. And while there seems to be a glimmer of hope, it is so far into the distance. Bring your healing presence closer to us. We ask you to be with those who are grieving. The loss that people are experiencing right now is unimaginable. There is the deaths that come so quickly. There is the loss of jobs, income, dignity. There's the loss of food to feed your family and a house to shelter you. There is so much grieving going on right now, so much hurt and pain. We ask you to draw near with your holy presence. Be with those who are lost and anxious and lonely. And Jesus, we stop here to experience your touch by saying the words that you've taught us to say, the prayer that you have placed on our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. May you be fed by the Holy. May Jesus touch you and lift you up. May you help bring the dawn, help bring the Holy into the lives of those around us who we're called to serve. Amen. We're so glad you could join us for worship today. Thank you for entering the holy with us where we experience the power of Jesus to lift us by the hand. This month, our special mission offering goes to support our Food for Kids program. This is a program that helps to provide about two days worth of food for children in our community, whether they get the food from the library or sent home with them from school. We fill these bags, pack them with our hope and prayers for the children who receive them. So if you'd like to support our mission, please visit our website, stpaulshinkley.org. You can also write a check and send it to St. Paul's United Church of Christ, P.O. Box 1271, Hinkley, Illinois, 60520. Thank you for your support.